That drained him pretty good, didn't it? Not bad. See, we go to a watermelon here. Oh, that split him pretty good. But you know what? I got this bayonet right here. I don't know what came over me. I'm sorry there. That escalated a little bit quickly. We're going to be talking about this Martini Henry today. Uh, we've already done a review on this particular rifle, but we've got it outfitted with a pretty interesting uh, kind of veneer sight from a Ross rifle. We're going to be doing a little bit of shooting with it. See what kind of accuracy we can get out of it today. We're going to go up the hill, take some long range shots. That was kind of fun and necessary. Let's move along. That's not too bad. All right, guys, we're going to be doing a little bit more work with the Martini Henry today. This particular example was acquired through Atlanta Cutlery in Conyers, Georgia. Uh, they're an excellent group of people to work with. You can go over there in the warehouse, pick one out, and uh, that's what I did with this particular one. Today, we're actually experimenting with a little bit of a modification. Now, I can't take uh, credit for this particular uh, little mod here. Uh, this comes from a good friend of mine, Jens Boy 2003 here on YouTube. He uh, did a video some time back where he talked about a sniper mod for his Martini, where he took a uh, Ross 1910 Mark III target sight, and it just so happens to fit a Martini Henry very, very closely. So I've outfitted my Martini with that particular sight. This one, I believe, is off of Mark III. There's two different variants of this particular sight. This is the later variant, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm not up on my Ross rifle history like I should be. But basically what we have here is an adjustable diopter veneer type sight for a martini. You've got a diopter, you've got a V-notch, and then you've got fully adjustable windage and elevation. So what this particular video is intended to be is a test of this sight. Now guys, we're in uncharted territory here. I have no idea if this thing is going to work well or not. Uh, you're literally learning as I'm learning along with me. So I'm going to get Chad to spot and we're going to take a few shots with the gun and try to get on the gong here at a couple of different ranges and just see how well it works. Well, I've done a little bit of preliminary accuracy testing. 100-yard uh, accuracy is actually pretty decent. Uh, we're getting five shots into around a two and a half, maybe three inch group, which for a martini, guys, I mean, you gotta think, this rifle is almost 140 years old. Okay, so she's been around the block. And for those of you that don't know, the martini is a Peabody uh, style action in 577 450 martini henry boxer uh, cartridge is what it shoots this particular gun was produced in 1888 so it's definitely an oldie but a goodie okay we're going to take a few shots with it we're using real black powder we're not using smokeless or substitute we're just gonna give it a try and see what happens we've got a kind of an educated guess as to what the gun is going to do accuracy wise but the point of this video is I want you guys to kind of learn along with me and one thing I can say about the Martini Henry is that to some small degree it's pretty much been the bane of my existence for about the last three years. I mean that in the most sincere way, in a good way. Um, in some ways I want to pull my hair out trying to get them to shoot accurately. On the other hand, it's highly rewarding knowing that I work my butt off to make this ammo and it's very rewarding to know that I'm making an old war horse talk again and shoot again. So it's, it's bittersweet because on one end, you really want to see the things be really accurate. I've experimented with different bullet weights. I've experimented with paper patching versus using actual you know, projectile that fits the bore. I've experimented with different powders, uh, different amounts of powder, just all of the different factors I can change to try to get the gun to shoot the way I want to see it shoot. Now, Chad and I did a previous video where uh, you know, we were actually getting some pretty respectable accuracy out of this exact rifle without changing the sight. Now, one thing I want to mention, this sight is not permanent. I can, I can drive the pin out and put the uh, original rear sight back in. It does not bubba rise the rifle in any way at all. I can change this back to the original military configuration at any time. Uh, but we were getting some pretty fair accuracy out of it. I thought it would be fun to try out the uh, Ross target sight just to see if that accuracy might improve some. That's all we're trying to do here. So take a few shots, and uh, this is a, a great uh, way to see a martini in action. 
big old honking caliber, guys. That's a 480 grain cast pill. Uh, this particular one is 70 grains of black powder, so a slightly reduced load. Uh, the original military load, I believe, used 85 grains 2F powder. This is Swiss 1.5F. I'm experimenting with a slightly different powder. Let's give it a try. You ready? Going for two? Yeah. Yeah. Send it. Well, we got this ridiculous wind out here today that is not helping things. No, not really. Very lower left corner of the plate. Lower left, you say? Yep. <laughs> I'm so impressed at how hard it smacked that gong. I mean, you can just hear the power. It's a lot of lead. Yes, it is. Send it. Oh, yeah. Top right quadrant. Top right. Yep. I was favoring a slightly uh, right hand hold. So you say center it back up, maybe? Yeah, maybe just cut it back in half. Yep. Well, guys, what we're going to do, uh, about every five shots, we're going to stop and clean just because I'm trying to really wring the most accuracy I can out of this thing. Uh, we're using LPS2 for that purpose. I love LPS lubricants. And guys, don't, don't mistake in anything. I'm not paid by them or anything like that. They're a local company here in Beaufort, Georgia. I've kind of, you know, gotten acquainted with their products and I kind of like using some of their stuff. So just kind of take that for what it's worth. I like using their stuff. Uh, the LPS2 is great for black powder cleanup, among other things. All right, we got a round in the tube here. We're going to uh, see if we can connect with this gong and we might push it out to 300 and see if we can connect with the big gong on the hill there. I'm just so impressed with the, how hard that round hits. It just smacks the piss out of that gong. You ready? Yes, in it. Oh, yeah. That favored more toward the center of the gong, slightly left. Nice. Well, I'll tell you what, though, if we had a Zulu down there, he'd be counting his, yeah, counting his last minutes, wouldn't he? He very well may be. All right, one more shot here. Now, guys, one thing that I'm noticing here with this rifle. My peep sight is walking around a little bit. I think the recoil forces from this gun are jostling it around a tad. I'm gonna have to look at a way to kind of make that work. We might try the different raw sight that has kind of a, a more coarse worm gear adjustment uh, that I would say is actually a little bit more positive, okay? So we may end up changing this sight out for a different model. And of course, that means we get to revisit this video at a later time, more than likely. But uh, the little gun's connecting quite nice. I tell you what, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna aim right over the top of his dome there at three and see if we can connect with the body. Okay. And let's just lob one in and see what happens. All right, Why not? Send it when you're ready. We got a wind. We got a 15, 16 mile an hour wind right in our face. Oh, it's it's probably... it's, it's a steady 15 at least. Yep, I'm sending it. Go ahead. Look at that, right in front of it. It hit about three feet low in front of him. Man, the windage though. Yep. That windage is spot on. It is. Is that elevation? Yeah. Tell you what, I'm gonna give it some elevation. You said three feet? Oh, at least three feet, yeah. At least center. three feet. Okay. Our windage is good. I tell you what, I'm gonna give it some elevation and we're gonna try a bullseye hole for our last shot. And then we're going to stop and clean the rifle because I don't want it getting too gooped up and affecting our accuracy, affecting the sanctity of this test of our old British girl here. I love this rifle. All right, I'm going to go for a bullseye. Right under it. Bounce. Man, did you hear it bounce and hit the back stop? Oh, yeah. It you smacked actually, the crap out of it. You actually hit about the same place. Well, yeah, that was that was with a bullseye, though. Yeah. So if I bring my point of aim back up, we might, we might be uh, in good shape there. 
I'd say if you probably aimed with the, with the current sighting arrangement at the bar, you may hit the target. Well, let's try it, and then we'll clean. Try into that bar above the uh, target there. You know, for some reason, I don't know why, uh, th this uh, gun always makes me think of Sean Connery. Like, he's pitching the ace at 900 yards. <laughs> All right. One more shot. One more shot, for the record. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you hear it rang that target? Man. And, and that's uh, not a that, light target either. Well, that particular one is the 50 BMG target, isn't yeah. it? So it's, it's ringing that 50 cal target like a little rag doll. It's a three-quarter inch steel target. <laughs> three-quarter inch steel target at three, three, over 300 yards. So uh, we're going to clean the rifle. That's, that's pretty interesting result there. So let's, uh, let's clean it and shoot some more. We're going to take a little bit of a break uh, from the normal range shooting here. We're going to actually pop a couple of cans of potted meat here. Uh, we've got 12 pounds of ham spread out between four cans there, like kind of a spam can of uh, potted meat there, ham. And we're going to hit it with a 480 grain pill on top of 85 grains of black powder. This is a full power military load for the Martini Henry here. This is going to be fun. Let's have a look. We always like doing this kind of stuff. Here we go. Well, <laughs> that was interesting. Let's go have a look and see what happened. Well, something told me to bring more ham. It, it just wasn't enough. It went all the way through one, two, and three, out four. Pretty interesting to see the penetrating capabilities of this rifle. We'll probably do some more penetrating tests with this rifle at, a, at another time with some other meat mediums, probably some ballistics gel and things like that. So make sure that you're uh, staying tuned for that. Uh, we're going to get back up the hill, have a little more fun. I think Chad and I are going to finish out the day with a fun little lunch battle that you don't want to miss. Make sure you follow us up to the hill for that. And for now, I think it's safe to say I dub thee Sir Ham Hammer. Let's go up the hill. That was cheesy, but let's do it. Well, actually, I lied. We're not going to go up the hill just yet. I really want to see one of these projectiles stop and see what it looks like after penetrating all that stuff. So we lined our ham back up with a bunch of random juice bottles we had left over from earlier in the video. And we're gonna see if we can't stop this big old 480 grain pill coming out of this martini. 85 grains of black powder. Guys, this is getting down. This is mainly to show the power of this thing. Here we go. Well, did it stop it? Let's have a look. All right, guys, I could have swore that all of this trickery that we set up here would stop the martini, but it turns out not even close. With the meat being on the outside of the tins and we, you know, un un untinned the meat, so to speak, put it in the front, it threw that meat everywhere. In the slow-mo shot, we saw chunks of ham flying in every single direction. I mean, we've got ham scattered like in a 15-yard radius around this entire table. So the amount of energy that that cartridge has I mean, this really was one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, uh, you know, 45 caliber breech loader of the era. About the only one that I think would be more powerful would be a Whitworth, and they were definitely not issued in the numbers that these were in, in that time frame. Pretty dang interesting. We're going to run up the hill. We got one more awesome thing to show you. Stick around. This has been fun. All right, well, we hope you enjoyed that uh, short intermission there where we tested out the penetrating capabilities of this uh, awesome little rifle here. You know, we try to mix things up and have a little bit of fun on this channel. It can't be all work and no play. Got to have fun while you're learning something. Uh, black powder cleanup in general, I wanted to give you just a very, very quick little rundown on how I take care of my cases. When I fire uh, one of my cartridges here, I put it into this uh, bath of warm water. This is uh, one part vinegar, uh, three parts water. All right, so that, you know helps neutralize the black powder uh, that's down inside the case and all the residue and nasty crap. And this thing also has a whoa, horrible odor. Okay, so make sure if you're gonna do this, keep this out of your house if you wanna stay married. I'm gonna set this back here before it busts and hurts somebody. We're gonna take a few more shots and then uh, Chad and I have a clever idea for a lunch battle. 
Uh, one thing I want to mention about this particular site, uh, because many of you guys are watching this, you might be considering doing something like this yourself, so I want to make sure that I pass along as much information as I possibly can about this. I know this is kind of a limited subject. There's only so many people out there that care about something like this, but it's important to me. And that's why I like putting these kind of videos out there because it's preserving uh, our history, not only as shooters, uh, the history of people that shoot guns, but our military heritage, British military heritage. So to me, it's important to have these firearms out there and have them in use and have people enjoying them. Okay, that is the whole spirit of this video. Is I want people to enjoy these guns. Um, one thing about the site is when you get on the lower end of the elevation spectrum, when you start bottoming out the site, it seems like the, the worm gear, the screw that actually moves the site up and down, it kind of bottoms out and it, it almost kind of I don't want to say jumps the threads, but when you're on the lower end of that spectrum, the sight can jump around a little bit and can give you some really odd uh, accuracy anomalies that will kind of present themselves from the sight moving. I mean, obviously, if, if you sight in the gun and everything's going well and then you shoot and it shifts around, what's well, going to change around your, your point of impact a little bit? I found that by utilizing a 60 grain or 70 grain load, that's a little bit of a reduced load, you can still run the 480 grain pill. But whatever powder you want to run, if you'll reduce your powder charge a bit, make sure you're using a good filler, make sure you're taking up the volume of space in the case itself, and you're not getting any type of a, uh, we've got a lot of wind out here, make sure you're not getting any type of an air pocket in the cartridge. You don't want to have any voids. You got your grease cookie in there, and then seat your 480 grain pill. Now, a lot of militaries back in the day would use uh, of sorts, kind of a carbine load that had a lighter grain pill. We're talking about using a 40, uh, 480 grain projectile. Now, one thing that I found with this is that if you'll use that 60 or 70 grain charge on the 480 grain pill, you'll, you'll be required to put in a little bit more elevation on this site. And I found that as you give the, the elevation uh, screw a couple of turns on this site, it'll actually, it, it, once it gets two or three full rotations, it won't really jump the threads as bad as it does near the bottom. I believe, I haven't pulled the side apart, I believe that, the, that the, the screws actually tapered at the bottom to help it grab and pick up and then go ahead and put the side up. That's a theory, of course, I, I'm not sure. But to test my theory, we fired those last shots, we connected with the gong, I've left the side alone, I've cleaned the barrel, we're going to try another shot and see if my theory is correct. If my theory is correct and the sight has not moved, then we should impact that gong on the first try. Hopefully the British surplus gods are on my side here. You ready? Uh, yes, yeah, Senate. This wind is making this a challenge. But that you know a, what? I, I like a challenge. That was about a 25 mile an hour gust. Yeah, more it's, than it's, that. it's a strong gust. You ready? Yeah, send it. Oh man, elevation was perfect. Hit about six inches off the left side of the plate though. I mean, God, that would have just rung it dead center. Okay, I got oh, you. Oh man. You said six inches? Yeah, about six inches, about half the plate width off the uh, left side. You know, it might be that wind pushing it around just a little yeah, bit too. Yeah, it could be. Uh, same place, Eric. You, you still off the left side. Elevation's perfect. Yeah, man. I, I think our uh, our wind is certainly catching us. Give it That's, a little Kentucky windage there. I'm going to. Kentucky windage. What about Birmingham windage? That'll be fine. Okay. Birmingham small arms windage. Yes. Got to gotta remember our British fans hey, across the pond. Give it a little BSA there, boy. A little bit of, whoa, boy. A little cockney. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. I know. My cockney's terrible. You ready? Send it. Now our wind died down. I think I'm, I'm going to stick with the same. I couldn't see, boy, due to your cloud of smoke. Well, yeah, you know, it's, it's funny that, that that round, guys, is getting down. It's moving fast. It gets there in a hurry. Make sure that nothing's occurred there. Nothing's moved around. 
Get one more uh, college try there. One more college try. One more Oxford try. Yeah, o Oxford try. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna we're gonna have a lunch battle. Sounds like a plan. I'm having a battle just trying to hit this gong. I don't know. Get Chad involved. We a losing proposition. Send it. You hit just off the left side again. I mean, it. Oh God. It was like it's right off the edge of the plate. A group, like on the left side, that's what about probably about eight, ten inches, maybe, give or take. Nice. I mean, we even know, with this wind. Yeah, the wind's not helping. No, no. It's at interesting all. though that you know, e even though I'm missing the gong, it's shooting a good group. So that tells me that my sighting arrangement is probably okay in terms of being consistent, but the wind is catching us. And guys, that that's just one of the challenges of doing this kind of shooting. I mean, you have to remember this this gun is over a century old. So this is a very old firearm. Now, if we were out here with a SCAR Heavy like we were the other day, you know, would, would we still have a problem with windage? Well, of course. It, it's just part of the fundamentals of shooting is judging wind and judging distance and knowing, knowing your rifle and knowing what it's gonna do for you. And I feel that with this raw sight, it gives me an ability to predict things a little bit better. So I think now that I know I can really sight this thing in and it'll stay put, uh, we're gonna do more with this particular load. I, I would go up to 440 today, but I tell you what, we're gonna save that for another day because I've only got 10 rounds of this ammunition left. Uh, I'm gonna work up more of this particular load. We're gonna get the suck, sucker uh, sighted in really well. And we're gonna come back out and, uh, and do some more fun stuff with the martinis. Uh, we always relish the opportunity to get these guns out and have fun with them because they're just so much fun to shoot. And uh, we hope that you've you know, enjoyed seeing it in action. But uh, I think that the, the Ross target sight is a viable option. If you've got a martini and you wanna have a little bit of fun and come up with something that's gonna just kinda give you an additional level in your shooting, uh, you can certainly do it. Now, one thing I will mention, uh, these sights are a little bit on the expensive side, okay? I paid about $140 for this sight. I bought it on eBay. Now I'm probably putting my foot in my mouth because now every single one I want to buy, you guys are going to be trying to outbid me on them. They don't come up for sale often. They're very, very hard to find. But if you can find them, I think it's an excellent addition to the Martini. Uh, we're going to be looking at some different options for sighting arrangements. I might even end up making a scope mount for this thing. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. I might put a Warren Swayze on it. I don't know. I just enjoy playing with these Martinis and I kind of enjoy the experiences I have seeing all the comments that people uh, leave about th this type of rifle because uh, it's a very specific person that enjoys shooting a rifle like this and uh, I'm definitely a nut for the martini I love them so I'm gonna clean the bore on this I've got 10 shots left and I tell you what I've got a five gallon propane tank we're gonna strike some row flares on it stick it all the way down there and let's see uh, at lunch battle let's see if Chad and I can connect with that little devil and see who can hit it first and uh, we'll make us a nice fireball and that'll end today's uh, shooting. So I know we didn't send a ton of rounds downrange today, but it was mainly an exercise in the sight. You know, the, the gun is awesome, of course, but I wanted to showcase the sight and the way that it operates and everything. So again, you have windage and elevation adjustment. The stud that holds the sight in place on the gun is almost the same exact size as the British counterpart that came on the gun originally so you won't have to bubba the gun at all to install it. Uh, you'll have to find a Ross that's missing a sight or find a parts gun that somebody's bubba it up and pull the sight off of it or whatever. There's a few of them floating around out there but not many. So uh, let's spark that tank up and have a shot and uh, let's make us a huge fireball. Should be fun. All right, guys, so we set up a propane cylinder down there. This is a full cylinder. This isn't little baby camping cylinders. This is big boy and some road flares. And I think we're gonna know if we're gonna hit this thing. But anyways, Eric's giving me the first shot. And just a little disclaimer, I have not shot this rifle since Eric mounted the raw side on here. So he's telling me where to aim. So I'm gonna give it a whirl and see. See what we can little do here. Little does he know I'm telling a lie so he'll miss. Probably. Oh, I think you're gonna, you're gonna smack the crap out of that thing. All right, so we're just gonna give it a little bullseye hold here. Take your time, and go we're gonna, for it. We're gonna take turns. If I miss, we're gonna take turns until, you know, whoever hits it, hits it. I mean, we thought about maybe doing this offhand, 
But it's so windy out here, the front of the gun is just moving all over the place, and we've only got 10 rounds, so, yeah, one of those things. Oh, well, Mr. Bullseye here, he's going to hit on the first shot, I guarantee you. Yeah, uh, you know, you're probably going to jinx me, but that's okay. Oh, just Man. over the top of it. It went over the top about maybe a uh, few inches. Ah. You barely missed it. Ah. You almost shot the valve off ah. the top of it. Man, that bullet flies so straight and true, too. It, That's the scary thing. Well, if you miss it, now I know what I aim. Well, you're going to spot. So, you see, what it's like reverse spotting. <laughs> because, like, you're spotting, but... I'm like, I didn't tell you where you miss, but you know when you, if I miss, you know where to aim. So see, it's... <laughs> it's almost like cheating. It's like cheating. Oh, that little cylinder. That cylinder. Oh, just over the top. Just over yeah. the top. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, All right. All right, let's see. Trade places. <laughs> that damn train. You want to wait on the train? Heck no. Send it whenever you're ready. Oh, right over the freaking top of it. Again! Dude. <laughs> Dude, you... You literally almost grazed the valve on top of it. Ah! We might run out of ammo at this rate. Oh! <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Did I hit it? No. You, you hit just low and left. It like grazed off of the ground and hit the backstop. <laughs> 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 oh god. Man, these dang martinis uh, are a hoot, aren't they? I love shooting these things. Holy crap. Oh man. Uh, uh, I want to see that thing go up and smoke, buddy. Alright, let me give it a little bit lower hold. Yeah, well, about four inches from wherever you were before, and you should be right on it because you barely missed it. Dude, right. you shot over the top like a foot and a half. God dang, man. That's crazy. Well, maybe one of us will hit this thing. Maybe one of us will hit this thing. Possibly. <sighs> oh, it's all in good fun. Oh man, that was like way low. Really? Holy cow. Oh, I did change the sight a little bit. What? I know where to put it back. Heresy! Heresy! He's cheating, boy. Well, dang it. I We're thought I was going to be flares. slick and di dial a little bit, but I guess I... Well, we both really don't have anything quit to cheating. lose. Quit cheating, quit cheating. You go ahead, you go ahead. All right. So what happens if we all miss? If we all miss, I guess we're gonna go down there and shoot it with a Glock or something. Did Dude, that thing you really uh, just hit? You barely nicked it on the left side. You oh, did hit it, God. but you didn't hit a solid. Go ahead and shoot again. You know where to aim. Go ahead. All right. I'm going to give it just a slight right hold. Yeah, give there. it a slight right hold. Put a hole in that thing. This is kind of cheating. But we're we're going to give it to you because you hit it, but just cheat it over to the right about four inches. Dude, it hit to the left about a foot. I saw it. Yeah. Your uh, windage looks like it's pretty good, though. You might bring it down just a bit. I think one of our flares went out, so that's why. It go, did. Yeah, go ahead and hit it. All right, let me see if I can nail this sucker. Hey, yeah. Listen. All 
Now that one hit over the top and to the right. Man, so I'll whatever you, you what. did, cut it in half and All lower right. your hold a little bit. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, maybe no fireballs today. No, we're going to get a fireball one way or the other. Hmm. Yeah, the smoke obscured my uh, vision there. It hit, elevation was good, but it hit just a little bit to the right. Well, we both lost. This is the first lunch battle we both lost. How does that work? I don't know. I guess we go and do we need to do we have to wash dishes for our meal? I don't know. Eat? I mean, give me that brass. Right. I got more ammo. Rats. Boy, that's some stinky stuff. Yeah, it is. We'll keep trying. Always a good excuse to shoot a martini. Not complaining. All right. I'm going to give it a bullseye hole since this is hotter ammo. Yeah, whatever you're doing, aim lower because it's hotter ammo. <laughs> yep. God, that scared the crap out of the cows. Dude, it never gets old. <laughs> That's what it took. That was a full military load. I guess these little wimpy loads didn't really do the trick. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. <laughs> oh, man. This crap really never do, does get old. But, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, Eric wanted to do this, and we want to put this together just to showcase this raw sight. Just how perfectly it sits on the gun and how much uh, of a better sighting arrangement that it provides for the Martini series of rifles here. And uh, we're going to be doing more work with this in the future. And until next time, you know, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we always have fun. And, you know, these black powder guns like this are certainly a labor of love. And I uh, hope that, you know, you people out there watching this video can, can appreciate that and maybe look at maybe getting something like this yourself and, uh, you know, going through the process of hand loading for it or trying to procure the ammo for it, which is uh, relatively expensive. But you guys take it easy and have a good one. We'll see you next time.